In the next set of videos, we're going to give a very brief introduction to continuous dynamical systems. So they differ from the discrete systems that we've studied earlier, uh, which are governed by a difference equation, in the sense that now we have systems where time evolves in a continuous manner, and they're described by differential equations. So you have a system where the equations involve a derivative um, with respect to t. Now, since we already spent a lot of time looking into discrete time systems, it would be interesting if we could find some methods to somehow describe the continuous time system as a discrete time system. And people have been looking at two different ways to perform that. And the first one is uh, an obvious thing to do, and that's called the time t map. Now, what, uh, what is the idea here? The idea is to take some snapshots at some fixed intervals in time, so like a stroboscopic approach, and then only look at what happens to that continuous time system at these discrete time uh, intervals. Now, in general, if you want to uh, calculate such a map, you might need numerics to solve the equations, but there are some times where the equation is simple enough such that you can do it analytically. And that's the case for this very simple example that we're going to look at here, um, which is given by the equation dx by dt is minus kx. So this is, for example, the equation if x represents a temperature um, that describes the cooling of an object with a certain specific heat, uh, k. So pause the video, see if you can solve this particular dynamical system, and if you can calculate a discrete time t map uh, based on this particular continuous differential equation. So very simple differential equation where you can write down the solution as follows, that the time evolution of x is given by some sort of initial condition at um, t0, which we call x0, and then you just have exponential dk. So what happens if we try and turn this into a discrete time map? So if you look, for example, what happens when we move from a time instance t0 to a next time instance t0 plus our time interval uh, big T. Now you see because of this, uh, this exponential over here, if you substitute T0 plus T inside this exponential, this will turn into a product. Basically what happens if you want to move uh, from T0 to T0 plus T is that the state will get multiplied by an exponential minus K big uh, T. So this is how you construct a discrete time map. So you have a 1D map, uh, which will be governed by the following update equation. Uh, so the previous states just get multiplied by minus kt. So this is our uh, time t map for this uh, very simple trivial example. By the way, we did look at time t maps before, actually before introducing this, this concept of um, continuous time maps in the very first example that we gave at the beginning of this chapter, where we looked at laser dynamics. We also studied the laser dynamics at very specific points in time, so we also had the stroboscopic approach uh, there. So this was like a pre-taste for stuff that, uh, that was coming at the end of this chapter. Right, so that's the first approach, time t maps. The other approach um, is something a bit different, and that's due to a very famous French mathematician Poincaré. So these are Poincaré maps. So what he was studying, for example, is three-dimensional uh, trajectories, and he wanted a way to, to simplify these things. Um, so let's have a look at a figure of such a 3D trajectory. So say you have a continuous time system, uh, which evolves in three dimensions, and if you have an initial condition over here, it describes this particular uh, path here. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at one dimension lower. So in our case, this is going from a uh, space to this, to this plane here. And you're going to look at when this trajectory pierces this plane, uh, but only in certain directions. So you just follow this trajectory, and every time it pierces this plane uh, going downwards, uh, which happens, for example, at the point A, and also at the point B, you make a note of it. And then the discrete time system is the system that takes you from the point A to the point B and then to the next time this curve uh, pierces this, uh, this plane here. So obviously this is not something that's very easy to do uh, analytically, so most of the time you need to uh, do numerics in order to calculate that map, but it is something that can be done 
and it's a way to simplify the description of the problem both because you go from three-dimensional space to two-dimensional space and because you go from uh, continuous time dynamics to discrete uh, time dynamics. And you see indeed that there will be a clear link between the dynamics of the continuous time system and those of the discrete time system. Because if you have, for example, a closed loop, which is being described by your trajectory, this will get translated um, into uh, hitting the same points uh, over and over again when you uh, pierce this, uh, this, this reference plane here. Okay, so these are the two techniques, time t-maps and Poincaré maps. Uh, they're quite similar, but they do have an important difference. And pause the video and see if you can identify that uh, difference. The difference is quite simply that in the case of these Poincaré maps, the times at which you pierce this plane uh, from up to down uh, these time intervals do not need to be equally spaced, whereas in the time t interval, they happen at regular intervals uh, like a stroboscopic approach.